Gerald W. Brister. Let's continue with our welding series. And we're running roof here on our second joint, 375 wall, 12 inch. I'm using 532 rods, 5P plus. Uh, you can see my machine. I'm in the 240 range. I think I was running 40 to 60 plus minus somewhere in there. Uh, I'm welding what I consider to be my harder side. I consider it the harder side because it has a shorter pup and so I don't have the place to put my arm as easily as a full joint. You always want to do your hard side first. If you're doing a 6G on a 45, weld your off side first because you want to tie in from your strong side on the bottom, just like boxing. Jab left, knock out right. The pipe is a little bit high. I, I, for safety, I bought these uh, four-legged jack stands. I'm 6'2", and this is a little high for me, and I should have put it down a few inches. Get it down there where you're not having to have that shoulder up so high uh, that you don't have good control and you can see a little better. That would be the wiser thing to do. It's a good, pretty good uh, space here. Um, I can be racing off the top like on a line, but uh, that's not the place for that. I'm not trying to show off, I'm trying to teach you something. And I would recommend starting off kind of medium. That's what I did. Find out where your heat is. And I started having Daniel go up and up. And uh, you can see the space, wiggling my hand. That'll take out a little fingernail and a little wide spot. So that's what that's about. This side, for some reason, uh, right here where I took off, uh, it was a little irregular, a little wide. I had two choices. Uh, I decided to do this where you could see it, break the arc, turn the rod, catch it, and it turned out good on the inside. Or I could have done like I, on a job. If I was running fast on a job, if I was on a job and I'm Ricky racing, I would have run through this area. And what it would have done is what we call window pane. Uh, I would have light handed through it, it would have uh, caught, it would have left a little pea-sized hole, the metal would have came together again, pea-sized hole, probably three of them right there. And it uh, looks like windows. Uh, but I didn't do that, okay? And then you, I would have went to the bottom, you always want to weld to the bottom, come back and fix your uh, window panes and let it cool, because if it's cooler, it will uh, tie in better. But I decided to do that, okay? The other thing here is I kind of used up that rod, stopping, starting, and um, I knew I couldn't get to the bottom with it. When you make a rod change in the bottom, you're pushing about 7,000 degrees off that arc, about 3,000 degrees if you got a puddle. So you're pushing all this heat to the bottom. If you get down there and you're an inch from your tie-in and you're like, oh no, the rod's smoking, uh, don't have enough, you'll wind up with gas pockets and hollow bead. So uh, if you make a rod change down there, know this. You push all that heat down there, and when you change to a new rod, and you just have that little ways to go, the rod has the effect of adding what seems like five amps. So if you don't turn that heat down, and you come in there with that new rod by five, that's what I always do, then it's gonna flare. You're gonna have an irregular bead, even if you had a beautiful bead off the top, it's gonna be flat, and it's gonna be undercut and it's gonna show up on that film. So um, I like deciding ahead of time and starting my uh, new rod a little further back where it can blend in. Same thing here, wiggling my hand, coming in the tie-in. Um, good space.